Roblox has broken up different aspects of their game engine into services. Each service manages one piece of our game's overall puzzle. We can configure these services in our game to modify specific behaviors, like deciding how long it takes for a player to respawn. We can also use services while scripting to obtain information, such as which players are currently connected to the server, and also perform actions like prompting the player to purchase a game pass. Now, if we go into Roblox Studio, we can actually see a couple of different services inside of our Explorer. One of the most commonly used services is actually the Workspace service. This this service stores all of the objects, such as parts and models, that we want to be displayed within our game world. We also have the player service, which stores all player objects whenever a new player joins the game. Now, in addition to holding objects, the player service also has a property called respawn time, and we can modify this property inside of the properties window to configure how long it should take for a player to respawn after they've died. Now, like I said, we're able to use services inside of scripts. Let's go ahead and create a variable for the workspace service. What we're going to set the value of this variable to is actually the game object. Now this object contains a method called get service. And we haven't learned about methods yet, but methods are simply functions which belong to an object. So to use the get service method, we're going to type colon and then the word get service. Now that we're using this method, we need to provide it with a string that is actually the name of the service that we want to use. So for instance, we want to use the workspace service. And now that we've passed through the name of the service, this method will return to us the actual workspace service object. And now that we have that, we can access different members of this object. Now, now we haven't really learned about objects yet, but objects can be thought of as tables and more specifically dictionaries. So on screen, I created another variable called workspace and I set that equal to a table. Now inside of this table, we're storing key value pairs. And the reason I created this was to give you a visual representation of what the workspace object would look like. All of these things that are actually stored inside of the workspace service are referred to as members. And there's three different types of members. We have properties, methods, and events. Now properties are simply values that are stored within the object and they can simply be thought of as variables. So for instance, we have the air density property, which is set to the value of zero. Modifying this property would actually change how the aerodynamic force is calculated. And although you most likely have no idea what I'm talking about, just understand that this is a property that other systems in the game use and will be affected by changing its value. And these properties can easily be modified. So if we go before we create that second workspace variable, we can type out workspace and then we can start typing out the air density property. This will give us a description of what this property is actually used for. And then if we type that out, we can go ahead and change this value and just set it to something like 10. Now we could also do the same thing for allow third party sales. And we could set the value of that equal to true. So these can simply be thought of as the values that are stored inside of the object and we can change what the value actually is. Next we have methods, which are simply functions that are stored inside of this object. And again, we can use these methods as well. So we can go ahead and call workspace and this time we'll use a colon and then we could type out any of the method names. So for instance, we could say, get num awake parts. And when we hit enter, we have the parentheses added automatically there to make this into a function call. Now this object has a ton of other methods that we can use as well. And you might be more familiar with some of these, but just understand that methods are simply functions that belong to the object. Now the third and final type of member is actually events. And events allow us to listen for changes to occur in our game. Now the way that we can listen to events is by using the dot index. And then in the suggestions, the event is actually represented by a purple lightning bolt. So we can see that child removed as an event. And the description of this event is that it fires after a child is removed from this instance. So we can type out the event's name, then we can use a colon, and then we can type out connect. And then inside of here, we're going to want to create an anonymous function. Now, this is an example of how you can connect to an event. And we haven't learned about events yet. We're actually going to learn more about events in one of the next few episodes. But this is just a quick example of connecting to an event. And now whatever code we put inside of this function will actually run every single time this child removed event has been triggered. Now, if you ever want to learn more about a specific service, you can always search it up on the official Roblox documentation. Whenever you visit the documentation of a specific service, it'll start off by describing what the service is commonly used for. And then on the right, you can actually see the different properties, the methods and events and sort through all of them and see them all very quickly and easily. Often there's also code examples included as well. So you can see how to use different methods or updating different properties and things like that. Hopefully this makes understanding services relatively easy. Again, these core components really make up the entire game and give us really easy access to control many parts of her game as well.